record our HLTV. And there we go. We got some more uh, execs. We're going to heavy heavy or ready ready. We got some good luck. Have funs in chat. We should be having a good time on map one of our KTP Silver quarterfinal action. Romario 11 on the Axis side. Insomniac Gamers on the Ally side. Both of them uh, right in the middle of the standings. Four of seed Insomniac, five seed R11. Going head to head on Railroad 2 and then DoD Lennon after this. Head Like a Hole is going to be running train. I've played against Head Like a Hole on train. He is very solid going that route. Whereas uh, I think Burn with his laser MP40 will be going train for R11. Uh, if Burn gets through train, it can he can seriously like he'll get right where he is right here. He'll he, and he will be a menace. He will be a menace to the ally side if he can get through that train. We've got double readies. We are going to be starting. We are going to be watching Pibian versus Man with the snipers. Uh, head like a hole going train. Burn going train. Uh, we've got our uh, Vinok and Rafina versus Corey and Sean on the rifles. Nine and River going into those apartments. Let's watch duality here. They're going to be facing Matt and Zaps in those apartments. Man gets that first pick onto nine on those white stairs. Pibian gets a pick back on the thing with Rafino grabbing a nade kill on Corey Price. River Oyster is in that bottoms of apartments already through. Head like hole slow rolling on that train. Man is sniping four away. He uh, does not like his angle, he's, so he's going to go up to his loft. Meanwhile, Head Like a Hole wins that trade battle against Burn. Man with another nade kill. Man, uh, uh, Man dies to Kellen in that balcony area while Pibian is able to get a pick into that dark alley or dark hallway to help out River Oyster, who only has five health after a few grenades. We see a nade fly into that access loft, and Vinok takes a shot through the door, and River Oyster is sitting right on the other side, unfortunately. Vinok now gets a second kill onto Pivian, sees a third, uh, sees them come into that lower uh, apartments, and is unable to get that second kill as Duality picks him up. Man still over there in uh, four-way. Pibian respawns, going into his loft. Burn finds Head Like a Hole after Head Like a Hole pushed through, and now Burn is going to push through the train. And so, uh, gonna hope to turn the tables by being a menace at their spawn. Pibian kills Vinok as he comes through. Man getting a nice, uh, getting killed by Corey Price. Corey Price picks up a double kill before Rafina's grenade takes him out. River Oyster in that underpass area is unable to get a kill as Matt finds him there. Head like a hole does pick up a uh, burn as he comes out of spawn. So burn unable to be the menace that he wanted to be. Pibian going for this middle cap. So remember, in this in this map, you do not get points for capping the flags. Look, they just got the flag. Their team still has zero points. But what it does is it now starts the tick. So every 30 seconds, the ticks will go off, and you get a point for uh, uh, control of the middle or any of the advanced flags. You do not get points for controlling or capping those first two flags. And so we see a tick go off, and now we're starting to get two points for the allies for them holding that middle flag. River and Nine cleaning out apartments. It looked like River fell off onto that uh, that ashtray side. Matt's going to throw a grenade, try to get him out. River does kill Man, though. That is the sniper down uh, as River is uh, gets a second kill in that ashtray area. Can he get a third? No, he cannot. Zaps is able to take him out. Head like a hole does kill Burn, so now he's going to jump through and go through train. And that's what this... Uh, this Essentially, this route is. It's just uh, who can get the kill and who can do the most damage when they push up. Rafina went to kill Hell Like a Hole, and Hell Like a Hole was waiting for him the whole time. He's going to go back to make sure that R11 does not come through that train now. He doesn't want to push up too far if his team is not there with him. 
Corey, on the other hand, sitting in middle, making sure they do not capture that uh, fountain back. River Oyster 9 and uh, Duality all getting kills, meaning that there are three dead on the Axis side, only one dead on the Ally side. Mand is waiting for Corey. Corey had no chance as Mand gets him. Now, uh, Burn and Head Like a Hole are just going back and forth on that train. Pibian, here's the that Head Like a Hole died, so he's going to hop back, see if he can get uh, he uh, Burn coming through. He sees his buddy up on that, those balconies. That's River Oyster getting a double kill. A triple kill, picking up a car along the way. Uh, he had three health, went for the quadruple, but Matt was able to take him out. Had like a hole over here in Ticket. Sees or hears Sean die to Rafina, who must be in that four-way area. And so Rafina, who is 90, going to try to jump in. Had like a hole waiting for him. Corey... On the other hand, and nine push up, grab that third, that uh, axis second flag, and now Corey going to camp these sandbag spawns, waiting for them to uh, see what happens. See if you can get them as they come out of the spawn. And then we got a negative in chat. Good to go, negging their kills. They are two. Oh, beautiful foot shot from Man there on Pibian. Gets a second kill onto Duality. Uh, let's see if he can clean up this uh, the side of these sandbag spawns. And he does! He gets that no scope onto nine. Burn, on the other hand, getting that kill in train. And man with a triple kill, cleaning out Insomniac Gamers out of the side of R11 spawn. He's then going to go grab that ruined house for them again. Unfortunately, again, he does not get any points for that, but it does uh, prevent Insomniac from getting points every tick. Uh, Mand and Zaps, or Matt are fighting Cory. Matt does win that. Zaps gets killed, but then gets picked off in four-way by Pibian. So Mand gonna hear that call, and he's gonna push open that balcony door and see if he can kill Pibian. But River Oyster pushed up, waiting on him. Nine right behind him. So River Oyster is gonna go loft. Nine is gonna go into Dark Hall, and they are gonna slow roll it. They know they have control of that right side. Yes, they are gonna move out. We see Mand kill Pibian in that four-way area. Sean is able to then clean up man. Rafina does kill Head Like a Hole. Head Like a Hole is kind of the thing that's holding Insomniac back, and this is one of the issues as a train. When you're the only one going that route, you feel like you have to push, especially if the other side is controlling their side, and you feel like you have to push to get that cap out. And if you're the only one there, you could potentially give yourself a bad positioning, which is one of the reasons we see Corey getting a double kill allows Pibian to now move through with head like a hole so they can get two bodies going for this first flag instead of just head like a hole pushing Corey with a triple kill on that side. So it looks like Insomniac Gaming can capture that, uh, that third flag anytime they want. Uh, Pibian does not get the pick onto Pibian. Uh, sorry, Mand and Pibian. So, uh, Head like a hole, able there, gets a double kill into those spawns, grabs the thing. They have told him they probably don't have control of that third flag yet. So head like a hole is playing it safe. Although I would capture that first flag just to make it sure that we get those extra points on those ticks. You never know when an extra point is going to matter. He definitely would have got one on that tick. Corey has that car, and he is going nuts over here in four-way. He is now playing at G-Box. He, I think he's on a five-kill streak at this point. Gets another one, and he's going to push up to see if he can't help control the uh, Axis first as they come out of that spawn hole area. He sees a nade fly out. He's going to back up just in case it flies onto them, and he waits for Burn to come out and shoots Burn in the back. Meanwhile, Rafina holding that flag the best of his ability, him and Matt over here, making sure that Insomniac does not get a uh, second uh, cap out. Rafinha has moved into middle, gets a kill on Corey. The menace that is Corey Price has been taken care of by Rafina from that four-way area. Vanak over here, all the way up in the blue room. River Oyster, though, comes out, swings out, must have been a call, and he is able to make sure Vanak cannot get that ninja cap of the first to prevent a cap out. Manned over here doing his best to be a one-man goalie to make sure that R11 does not get capped out on. Meanwhile, Insomniac and Head Like a Hole have had control of that first flag, and as I say, that burn is finally able to get it back, but that was a couple points that Insomniac gamers were able to rack up because R11 could not get their first flag back.
<laughs> River Oyster picks up a car, swings around, says, how do you do to Zaps? Has a falling shot onto Matt, and he's going to run, grab that third flag, that ruined house. Nine, on the other hand, pokes out, gets a triple kill. And so now Insomniac traded control of the Axis first to now controlling the Sandbags and the Allies first. River Oyster with his falling shots, going to try to take out Rafina. He does get him over at G-Box, slips into a hall, and he's going to push up. Uh, sees Duality get a kill on demand, so now River Oyster going to really push up, see if he can clear out. There are three members of R11 just sitting at the first flag, just waiting on him. This is one of R11's strengths. They are very good at rotating as a team. So over here, Nine and Corey had control of that sandbag spawn. And you know what R11 says? Says, screw it, we're not going sandbags anyway. They're not going to come out here, get Nine out of four-way. He's now going to look over, but Pibian is waiting for him to come around that corner. Burn <laughs> sitting over here, at, waiting for Head Like a Hole to come out of train. He does have rifle support. Matt has picked up a car 98, so we have multiple car 98s running through those four ways. Duality is in train car, gets hit for four health, probably from a grenade. Going to throw a grenade out himself. Miss the throw. Uh, sees one there, so now it's just a game of walls. Who can shoot through the wall fastest? Burn can, so Burn gets the kill. Head Like a Hole, though, coming behind Sean. Meanwhile, Corey still holding down. Zaps was waiting for head like a hole. Uh, so uh, no ally pressure on that first flag quite yet. But Corey doing his best to hold that th third flag and be a menace at them as they try to come out of that spawn. If you watch a lot of DoD movies, where Corey is right now is where a lot of clips come from. You can, you can rack up a lot of kills and have a lo exert your dominance from this position. Man shoots his dead body. That's a That's an issue. He sees two people in that middle, so he's going to slow roll it. His buddy's going to prime your grenade. We'll see if he peeks out here. He does. He tries to draw the shot, tries to get a little bit of evidence, tries to wall them through. And <laughs> we see Fibian on the other side here waiting. They're just trying to peek each other. They're just trying to see it, who can get who. And Vinok ends up third partying. Uh, and killing Pibian. Sean then picks up Vinok. Sean gets a double kill under Rafina, pulling out that 1911. Burn winning the train battle again. And we see two River Oyster and Sean Duality pushing up that four-way area. Uh, Matt is waiting at G-Box for River Oyster. Rafina looking for Sean, looking for that Duality pickup. They're having a little bit of a rifle battle here. Uh, he switched over to Pibian, which allowed Sean to win that peak war. Corey unable to kill three of them with a one-shot rifle. I guess he just needs to KTP, you know? Uh, you got to be able to shoot three bullets at once, Corey. So, Vinok going to throw a grenade into those apartments, even though he knows no one's there. I guess it's just habit at that point. Man going to snipe from that train car. <laughs> Pibian, wait, we got sniper battle in the train car here. <laughs> Rafina's nade on connector wins that. Meanwhile, Burn in connector is able to kill them off. They come over. He captures the railroad. Did Man end up dying? I don't think so. He did not, so he's over here. He kills head like a hole as he comes through spawn. Pibian, though, able to pick him. Burn waiting for him, and Burn gets Pibian as he comes out of that spawn. Burn now has control of this ally's railroad. Sean over here uh, spawning, making sure they do not capture that middle. But Rafina's in ticket. We have full control of the railroad uh, from Axis. Pibian finally able to kill Burn. Uh, Vinok dies as he's going for that first from a beautiful throw named by Corey. But Manda goes right back to that train. Pibian also looking at train. The snipers have decided that uh, R11 has decided that they're not going to pressure middle. They're going to try to pressure the edges of the map and then collapse in the middle. Pibian waiting for Man. Man unable to get that kill. He was on the offensive there, which means he uh, was the one that had to peek. Nine going to throw a grenade into that blue room uh, just to make sure no one's in there. He does get a kill on Matt earlier. And he's going to run through these double windows, jump down. He's going to try to grab this flag. The confidence of Nine knowing that it was open, but Matt gets there just in time. But River Oyster providing backup. Uh, well, he gets one kill. Can he get a second kill? No, he cannot. Zaps is able to clean that up. Vinok sitting over here, 
it's always a bad sign when you have to crouch corner hold your own side of four way. He sees a grenade. Oh no! Runs into the dark hallway and a grenade just plops down at his feet. Duality with that nicely timed grenade cleaning up that dark hallway. Uh, Rafina able to get a trade though. Pibian is up in his loft. Gets a nice double kill, killing Rafina and Mand. Uh, and he is going to try to hold this underpass uh, and dark hallway area as nine dies to Vinok on one side. Matt playing underneath these double windows. R11 has resorted to camping in a little bit of unconventional, unconventional spots because they are unable to try to get that map presence that map control and the way that this map works right like r11 has been doing a very good job holding a very good job capping their flags back and yet they only have one point to show for it meanwhile sean over here quadruple kill in a hall gonna throw an unprimed grenade into that spawn rafina was waiting for him as he comes will that unprimed grenade get anyone it does not look like it but Sean, uh, over here, he now has 20 kills, uh, a lot of them being in that four-way area. Had like a hole over here in that ticket, finds someone in the underpass, and and so starts the rifle peak battle. Meanwhile, nine Pibian and Sean all die on the allied side. One of those was a team kill. Corey's an aid, being a little errant there. Had like a hole, going to push in, see if Burn came through train. And one did come through train. Head like a hole is going to try to wall through that door. We see uh, the car trying to wall in. It looks like uh, Rafina over here sitting on the outside of Ticket. He came through train for burn. He hears that door open. He's going to be very patient. He knows they're coming for out from spawn. He is desperately outnumbered, and they know exactly where he is. And he's going to wait for them to come around. He misses his shot, but is able to pick up the pistol kill before Pibian uh, is the backup from connector. So Rafina uh, able to call out Pibian in that connector, and man picks up a nice double kill on duality pushing up four-way, and then Pibian coming out of that connector. Man then jumps right into Ticket before River Oyster tries to shoot at him. He, River Oyster does kill Vinok as well. Burn! Double! Th triple kill! Over here! Remember I said if he comes through uh, Railroad, he's gonna have a very, very uh, good time being just a menace. He gets a triple kill with that MP40. Comes out! That's four! Gets... No! He cannot get five! Oh! Right at the end! Head like a hole! Able to pick him up, but not before uh, uh, he gets... Head like a hole down to 10 HP and Sean down to uh, 70 HP, which means if the one bullet that hit Sean instead hit head like a hole, burn would still be on his rampage over there. Rafina trying to nade spawn but gets killed by Pibian. Corey dies on those white stairs to Mand. Pibian going to go into his loft, maybe? A little indecisive. It's, it's always hard as a sniper to know exactly where you should go, what's going to give you the best peek. Yo, he sees man pop up and he missed the shot. Oh no, he's got to be mad about that one. So now he's on the back foot here. If he can get some help uh, shooting into that uh, thing, he does see Rafina and picks him off through those sandbags. Very nice flick shot on that. And he does get some help. Corey is able... Uh, sorry, not Corey. Is man still alive? Nah, he got some help. Man did die. Pabian gonna push all the way up into that A-Hall area. Burn sitting there. Uh, sees Man get sniped by Pibian as he comes through. So he's gonna prime an aid and throw it into, uh, by that G-Box area. He is then going to kill River Oyster. Very good awareness from Burn. They have, uh, here's Pibian kill Rafina. So they have, uh, three people over here at that, uh, that... Access first flag, head like a hole, gonna try to push through. Oh no, Burn had the uh, the glitch where if you die when you're shooting, you spawn back in shooting, and he happened to be pointing right at Rafina's head. So the R11 instantly lose Rafina as he respawns in. Burn does get a grenade kill on Pibian though, and it feels like he might be the only one here as his reinforcements are now coming. Nine with an Axis sniper rifle over here in four-way. River Oyster made a push, but Burn was able to clean him up after River Oyster gets two kills. So R11 playing safety. They are making sure they do not uh, get that uh, cap out on them. But the issue is, again, the way this map works, you have to have control of the middle or the advanced flag to get points, and you do not get points for capping them, only for holding them. So uh, even though Rafine, or, uh, 
R11 has been very stalwart in their defenses. Uh, Insomniac is steadily increasing their lead. Every 30 seconds, their lead increases. Burn throws a grenade. Kellen waiting for him right there. Matt finally able to get uh, one out of four way, but there is Duality able to replace River Oyster. Duality picks up that car, 98. He sees two, missed his shot, though. Uh, got a little too frantic with that. He's going to wait, missed his shot again. He's missed his shot again. This might be a ping issue. And uh, man waiting for him for the scope. Uh, uh, Sean probably is not too happy about that turn of events. Meanwhile, R11 still, again, the turtle that will not break. Corey sees death bounce right to him. Meanwhile, we are getting some crazy... R11 has not even tried to take back their uh, second flag. They have just been content with making sure they don't get capped out on. Meanwhile, River Oyster is on a tear. I don't know if you guys have been watching the kill feed, but River Oyster has been going on these three, four, five kill streaks every time. Meanwhile, Sean gets a double kill with that nade down four ways. So uh, Insomniac really holding on to this map control as they again get another three point tick. River Oyster already at 38 kills. There are 30 seconds left. Can River Oyster get this 40 bomb? And can Insomniac Gamers get a cap out? There is 39. We're at 39 kills for River Oyster. We are at 20 seconds, and Ross right past him. He swings around. Rafita able to kill him. River Oyster will not get that 40 kills for this half. Oh, yeah, those of you counting personal stats, anyone who has River Oyster on their fantasy team uh, are a little, a little miffed about that Rafina swing out, but a very nice shot from Rafina. Uh, to, again, R11 making sure they did not get capped out on, but Insomniac Gamers very steadily increased their lead. They had map control that entire time, and they were able to really rack up a lead here of uh, 88 to 1. So that honestly was a really, really good first half for Insomniac. They did not get a cap out, but it did not matter. They established their control from the very beginning. They were able to really uh, just push that map control. They were able to pressure different sides of the map and only have one or two people on the other side of the map, and they were able to hold it. Corey Price dominated when he was over on that uh, ashtray holding it. Uh, nine, very reliable coming out of the dark hallway, making sure they do not kill or do not come out of that sandbag spawn. Meanwhile, River Oyster and Duality running rampant through four-way through that apartment area, racking up a ton of kills as head like a whole had the chess match the entire game and pibian was able to provide that support uh as they actually ran through those uh the left side of the map there so r11 did a very good job making sure uh that first flag was protected but i do wonder if they instead they were they're now down by 87 points i do wonder a cap out is about 50 ish points right so if they would have just let them cap out and then uh, be able to reset and try to get that middle flag instead of constantly running uh into the meat grinder that was insomniac based around their spawn uh if that half could have turned out even a little bit different it might have just turned into a huge snowball by insomniac so uh r11 decided they were going to turtle up and they did successfully turtle up they did prevent that cap out but one has to decide if that is worth it because now they are down by 87 points heading into that second half so now the second half this is where the hltv can be a little buggy so we gotta uh, we got to see if the HLTV joined in when it was already live. Because if it did, it's going to stay in warp up mode. And it definitely looks like we are live. Yeah, they are, they are playing like it is live. So we're going to assume it's live. We see Rafina getting a nice double kill. We came in just a little late. No one has captured 
Like, it is not live, uh, because Sean just spec hopped. So, that can't be right. This is where... Okay, good. I never know. Sometimes the HLTV joins a little late, and it really throws me off, because it will join in, and it will still have that warm-up mode glitch, even though we joined in after they lived. And it's a little hard to control when that HLTV server joins in. I don't know exactly what we're waiting for. We have all 12 in there. Oh, no, our HLTV. Oh, they're going to reset the server. Looks like they're resetting the server. Thank you, Chi. I didn't know what he was asking for. Yes, the gold finals for NSA and Icy Hot are over on Corey Marco's channel. If you would like to go watch those, hop on over there. That is the end of the gold uh, playoff bracket is over there. You gotta admire how this dude can hold an automatic rifle through his hand and still have the the muscle strength and the the commitment to cup his hand like he's holding it there when really it's directly through his hand. That's pretty impressive. That's some army strength right there though. Absolutely, we're still playing this game nowadays. Welcome to the playoffs of the DoD 1.3 Sunday Night League called KTP. We uh, welcome new members all the time. Our Season 4 is wrapping up of this uh, KTP League. We, have, we play every Sunday night. We have a very active community. Exactly, exactly. One DoD and CS were a match made in heaven. Uh, pretty much everyone played both games at the same time. In fact, a lot of our players are still big CS2 players. Uh, we definitely we welcome everyone. There is a 1.3 DoD Discord that we could get the link for you to join if you would like to rejoin or re-see the community. We run 12-mans. Uh, we have a bot. You can join the 12-man bot, and you can fire off some 12-mans. There's probably one or two that fire off every night. And not, a, not to mention that we have 9, 13 teams in the league, and we are just wrapping up Season 4 here. We're in the quarterfinals of the lower league, the KTP Silver. KTP Gold Finals are also going on. You can find those on Twitch. Those are the finals for the top division if you want to find that. They are on the DoD thing. So well, it looks like we have popped into a live match here after they reset the server. We can see uh, that Sean Duality is off to a fast start with six kills already. Burn! Repping the Tommy, baby! Killing Duality as he comes in with a nice headshot as he goes through train. He grabs that first flag. He's got 10 health. He's worried about dying as he falls down, but he's got that laser Tommy and he's gonna use it. Matt over here in those apartments gonna try to make sure he can get this peak board. Let's see if he does it! 
River. Oh, and Nine has no patience. No patience for Matt and Vinox, little peak war. He comes around the corner. He gets a nice double kill, and he gives Axis control of that apartment, allowing them to then go and try to capture that uh, fountain. Matt tried his best to come uh, break it, but Pibian had their back manned over here. The only uh, burn and man. Burn gets a double kill on Cory and Nine as they come through. Man gets a kill on Head Like a Hole. And R11 in their turtle mode are going to prevent that cap out once again. Burn over here with that Tommy laser. Man with the thing. The, the, the. The discipline for them to trust each other, for man not to look at that ticket as Burn is able to pick up both kills, so man can kill head like a hole coming through the connector. That is some teamwork from two team members that have played for a long time together, trusting each other to have each other's backs, and it works out for them. R11 then able to pick up their first flag, so the threat of the cap out is now gone. Burn pushes all the way through the train car, grabs the axis first, and they're going to start getting a little bit more of those uh those uh tick points Rafina gets a nice shot on duality in that ticket house river oyster has a grand threw down his uh and he's able to kill Rafina in that thing he sees zaps come through zaps does pick up nine uh river oyster with the grand gonna try to pick him off and he does. He gets two kills using the rifle that won the war. But the problem is to make that three kills. The problem is the rifle that won the war was supposed to be for the allies, not for the Axis. River Oyster did not pay attention in his history class. And Rafina makes him pay for it by getting the nice wall shot. Meanwhile, Pippian gets a double kill. Sean is able to re-pick up their first flag, and the control of the mid has been in uh, the uh, Insomniac's control, so they've been getting those tick points currently 9-2. to two. Pibian over here, 18 health, lower apartments. Sean uh, trying to push up to grab that third, that uh, railroad flag, but the allies had just spawned, so they make sure that he dies because he was out in the open. Head like a hole with a car 98 sitting in that train car. They know he's here. He knows they know he's here. So he's going to be just hold a kind of, you know, a, a, a little thing. Sees one guy sitting over there. Rafina is able to hit him once. So head like a hole gets 90. Vinox over there kills River Oyster. Nine is able to kill Mac and Vinox. So nine comes in and cleans up apartments. Apartment control does stay in that axe's hands. But Zaps kills nine. And then goes out to make sure no one's coming through that blue room. So currently apartments are under River Oyster's purview. And River Oyster picks up his bar. And he's going to control that area. And we see him just waiting for the allies to come in. Let's see. Sean gets a kill on Mand with that grenade. Meanwhile, Zaps has a car 98, is able to pick up 9. And River Oyster hears all these footsteps around him. But, and there they are. And he finally gets uh, sick and tired of waiting. So he jumps through himself and is able to get one kill. Kills Rafina on the thing. So River Oyster, again, he dropped 39 last half. Already has 11. He's on a 6-kill streak, I think, on this life. He is definitely being the MVP caliber that we said he would be in pregame. Oh, nine with grabbing that grand, getting Matt as Matt comes into that apartment hole. Sean, you're looking in. He sees Zaps kills nine, so he is waiting to try to kill Zaps. Meanwhile, Burn pushing through train again. Uh, actually didn't push through train, which is killing head like a hole as he came through. Kill Sean as he comes out of that ticket. That's got to be really frustrating for Duality as he's died multiple times to Burn's Tommy gun as he tries to come through that uh, that ticket door. Sean with a double kill on Burn and Rafina, getting his revenge. He's then going to spam that sniper loft. Pibian, though, does pick up the kill. He's a little easier with the scope than Sean just trying to spam it. River Oyster back in his corner, having control of that apartment. But it looks like R11 is really flooding the railroad side. Corey with his second TK of the day. Sleeper Agent Corey, that's what we're going to call him if he gets another one.
he sees duality die and take it and he's waiting for Rafina. As Rafina comes around, Corey is there. He sees uh, man in that uh, sniper loft. He's going to try to peek and get some shots on him. And he does! He goes for the wall shot, and he hit it! Man was uh, did not peek that, and Corey got kind of tired of waiting for Man to peek, and instead shoots him right through the wall, clearing up Man out of that sniper loft. That's got to be annoying for Man, as Corey then goes on to get a second one. Man sees Head Like a Hole crawling through train, picks him off. Head Like a Hole was going for the prone shot, and did not even get a chance for it, because Man was waiting for him. Mand is able to win that sniper battle. Burn throws a grenade into that middle, and, and he's going to jump and run through that uh, train car. Burn over here, 13-9 and nine with the Master Sergeant Tommy. That is what I like to see. You are doing us proud. Can he get that kill? He can. He kills Head Like a Hole Stoss. Uh, Head Like a Hole didn't even hit him, so Burn still has full health as he runs up. Matt gets a double kill. Can uh, they transition this? There are three dead on the Axis side. Can they transition that into any sort of map control? Uh, it does not look like it. it Pibian and Sean are able to uh, clean out that middle area. River Oyster now going back onto this balcony. Let's see if he can establish control again. Corey gets a kill on Vanak. And uh, Burn does lose the flag, but kills Hyleka Hole and instantly caps it back. Rafina gets a kill on Corey. But can R11 get that middle flag? And River Oyster is having full control of these apartments. Gets one kill on Zaps. Falling down the stairs, gets the second kill on Matt. He's going to try to push through these doors. Opens them, see if anyone fires. No one fires. He grabs that first flag. He's instantly back into those lower apartment uh, stairs. Now, we just need to see if they can grab this uh, third, this railroad flag. And uh, it likes to push us out. The R11 getting three, four kills on it, and it looks like... They are going to prevent that cap out as Zaps comes in and grabs that first flag. River Oyster, though, does have a bar. He is crouching through this balcony. He's going to pop up, try to clean out Burn out of, or sorry, Rafina out of that middle area. Man, though, gets a double kill. Zaps is able to kill River Oyster. Vinok over here in underpass. He's pushed up out of blue room. Corey sitting on that balcony. He is currently the line of defense. It does not look like R11 is positioning to try to take this middle. And this is an extremely weird strategy that they've been doing because every 30 seconds they're losing a point, right? Insomniac is just increasing their lead. They're already up by 30 and by uh, 31 points as the tick goes again. And they score two points for control of that fountain area. And R11 is playing too slow. That if, like they are getting some really good individual plays, they are doing some really good turtling, but they are playing too slow, and it looks like they finally realized it. They're gonna run up and they're gonna finally capture this middle flag. I feel like this is a little late, and they're gonna have to transition this into uh, a cap out or two if they are going to try to win this overall match due to the fact that they were so low. Zap says, you are not getting that pack out. Gets four kills on Insomniac Gamers. And that means that R11 should be able to push up a little bit, although Insomniac just had an instant spawn, so they all died right at the end of the spawn timer. So they should be able to push up in there. Zap's already four kills to this life. He's going to push into that sniper loft. He's going to see if anyone runs into these stairs to try to get him. Nine, on the other hand, going to make sure no one gets that first flag. Matt from sees one jump into Ashtray, so he's going to be waiting for him to poke. And unfortunately, Corey wins the poke war there. River Oyster finds Rafina coming up from midway, grabs his uh, uh, Grand, and he's going to run into that sniper loft where Mand is already there, throw a grenade into those upper apartments, and kills Mand there. So we have Pibian and River Oyster just able, like, R11 finally put the, the, the pressure on, and, and Pibian and River Oyster are able to just come through and calmly reestablish control. River Oyster and Pibian again, getting some more kills. They are able to just try to, try to reset this map a little bit. Uh, R11 does have control of that middle, and they are the ones currently getting points. But Insomniac does have a big lead from last half, and they currently still have a lead from this half. They are in no rush with only seven minutes of this match remaining. Burn! Triple kill with the, uh, the Tommy! He's over here in middle. They're going to recap that middle. 
instant captured by that Axis, and Burn kills all three of them, and then is able to get that recap. Pibian tries to break it, but was unable to do so, even though he did get a couple kills. There were enough bodies still on the flag. River Oyster gets a kill on Burn, but Matt, over here, capturing that ruined house, he gets one kill on the platform. R11 knows they have to cap out. They are putting the pressure on. River Oyster runs over to safety that one. Head like a hole also here. Rafina waiting for someone to come out of the train, but Rafina is then going to go and push that four-way. So R11 have decided their route of pushing is going to be this four-way area. Vanak gets one kill on River Oyster. Uh, we see Pivian kill for Vanak. Rafina, eight health, trying to win this little peak war, but Pivian is behind him and is able to get him as he comes out. Mand and Matt, though, do kill duality. Pivian is still there. He sees, uh, he sees Mand. He's going to try to, ta uh, to try to win that sniper war. Uh, Corey, he does! Pavian gets the shot on the man, re-establishing control of Axis for that four-way. So R11 uh, puts some pressure on to try to cap out, unable to do so, Insomniac able to turtle up at their one at a clutch time. And like a whole gets one, but uh, dies to man. River Oyster gets two more kills, Corey gets a kill, and is able to recapture back that ruined house. He gets a kill on Deshaun coming out of that underpass. Man, over here, man quietly dropping 26 kills this half already. And five minutes left to go. Man has been the one willing them to victory. We thought Rafina would be it. But Rafina has not had a good grand half. Meanwhile, man finally able to get the menace known as Kellen out of that, uh, that apartment area. Pibian does kill their snipe over, but Frina is able to trade that back. Burn, they know you're here, bud. They know you're here. You gotta have some patience, my man. He does not have patience. He's gonna push through. He had, like, a whole gonna spam. And now it just comes down to who is going to see the side of the other person first. And that's pretty much who's gonna win that train battle. Had, like, a hole falling all the way back. Corey gets one kill with his grenade. Sees one in that connector area. And he misses his shot. That is the sniper man. And he's going to fall back into that underpass. Does not want to be too exposed. Mand, on the other hand, went into Ticket. And is trying to snipe from Ticket. We've seen him have success here before. And he is able to break that middle capture. Him and Burn kill Cory and Nine. A little ambitious of a capture attempt after not killing anyone there. Burn, though, uh, says, Duality, my son, welcome to my Tommy land. Pibian, though, does capture the ruined house back providing a little bit of breathing room for Insomniac Gamers as they now have control of both of their flags back. Zap sitting here waiting for them to come up on balcony. Burn has a car 98 in the train now. That's a little bit more deadly than the Tommy he normally has. <laughs> it's car 98 versus car 98 battle in train. Nine, out of blue room, gets a kill on Vinok as he comes down that white wall. Vinok was definitely not anticipating an SDG coming through blue room. And Nine able to get that kill as he goes to try to kill four-way. But Pibian's like, don't worry, Nine, I got it. And gets a double kill on the R11 team in that four-way. Nine tries to jump down to capture that middle flag. And no one is there with him. But now they are. And Nine doesn't even get credit as R11 is able. Rafina with a triple kill kills all three members of Insomniac trying to capture that fountain. Huge hold from Rafina right there. River Oyster able to kill the knock, cleaning them out of that four way. Corey gets manned out of that blue room. Very impressive by Corey. Man had a scope that whole time. Will Corey pick up the sniper rifle? No, he's going to keep his car 98. And he gets one kill as he peeks out of blue room. So Vinok dies at the first. Corey's going to grab this flag and uh, run back into blue room, it looks like. Pibian coming out of spawn, making sure no one's sitting in that ashtray area, then checks four-way. 
Zaps knows Cory's up there, but uh, unfortunately decides to peek White Stairs as Cory comes out. Sean is looking for ninjas. He is going all over the place looking for Burn. Meanwhile, Burn is uh, dead. So Burn respawns. So they were looking all over for Burn, and Burn wasn't there. Mand and Vinok getting uh, three kills. So there are three dead on Insomniac's side. Duality is not one of them sitting up there at the four-way box. Head like a hole, and Duality getting three kills right back. We see Kaori kill Zaps out of that four-way area. Can R11 get... They need... They have almost tied up this half. Okay, so it's 35-36. We're going to have another tick. It's going to go into 37 thir or 38 36 for our 11, but there's less than a minute remaining, and they are down by 87 points from first half. Insomniac just has to not get capped out on, and they will win this match. All they have to do is not get capped out on. I don't even think a cap out would win it. I think Insomniac has this in the bag, but they're going to play very calm. They're going to play very slow. They are just going to make sure that R11 has to be crazy and trying to cap these things. And I don't think R11 has truly looked at time left because they are not holding W hard enough for only 25 seconds remaining. Even though Rafina is getting three kills right there. Actually, Burn got that last one. But even though they're getting all these kills, just they're out of time. Time has ticked up. This is going to be the end of map one. We see Matt getting a flag cap there. We see Rafina getting a double, triple kill in that A-Hall area. But it's just, it's just, they, they will not cap out. They will not get this flag. And while they won that second half, 40 to 36, Insomniac Game will take that first match. They will be winning that first match. That was an extremely, extremely good uh, hold from Insomniac there to make sure that uh, they are uh, don't get capped out on. R11 did not play frantic enough in my mind. They did not play frantic enough uh, at the end there. They let the time tick by. Insomniac was happy to let that occur, and they were able to just milk that for their first map win. So coming over here, we have our prediction, our... Who took map one? That was Insomniac Gamers. So, very good for everyone who predicted Insomniac Gamers. Now, let's start another prediction. Who's winning map two? Will it be Insomniac with the 2-0 sweep? Or, it's DoD Lennon. Will R11 be able to have a nice little comeback and force a third map on uh, moving into that Anzio area. It looks like we are going to be in the same server. They've all they have switched it to Lennon and they have all joined in. You know, I never stopped and started this demo again for second half. Oopsies. Will second half be included in that first demo? I don't know. I don't know enough about HLTV.
All right, we have a substitution being made. LZL is coming in for game two. It looks like Matt is going out. LZL is coming in. So Vinok is going to switch over to the heavy. LZL is going to take that rifle. So Matt played heavy on all row row one. He is going to sit out. Vinok is going to move over to that bar. LZL is going to come in and take that rifle that Vinok vacated. And so we definitely have R11 trying to mix it up a little bit for Lennon. Maybe LCL is a little more comfortable on Lennon. Matt was a little more comfortable on Railroad. Or the fact that they lost means LCL is being tagged in to try to give a little bit of spark that uh, wasn't there for the flag caps of the last thing. R11 had some beautiful kills, some great single-player performances on there. Burn had some triple, quadruple kills with a Tommy, making my heart proud. Rafina and uh, Man went off some uh, with triples and kills, uh, preventing flag caps. But unfortunately, they the, the points that matter are not kills. It's objective score. Objective score is what wins the game. So if they uh, didn't have that, then, and they didn't, and they ended up losing by essentially the first half. The first half is essentially what lost the match for R11. Okay, ready, ready. We are going. We are going live. Map 2 between R11 and Insomniac Gamers here. Insomniac Gamers wins that map 1, so now it becomes a do or die for R11. They either win this map or they are eliminated from KTP Silver Season 4 contention. Rafina grabs that first flag. He is going to be running into Red Room, and he's going to slow roll it. Corey taking the car into apartments. Here's my complaint as a heavy player. They always send a car apartments. Why can't you just leave us heavies alone? Pibian is able to get one kill. Mand is in the loft. So we have both snipers in the loft playing that little sniper peak battle. Man now down, looking into that thing, Pibian up there. Meanwhile, the Axis are trying to capture that well. Uh, Sean has pushed all the way up, gets three kills at the spawn. Duality doing his best CK impersonation, grabs that first flag, runs back into swing door, that apartment area. Man should be waiting for him. And he is, but Sean gets the kill on man first. Now Sean, after grabbing that first flag, runs all the way in, grabs that first uh, that middle flag, almost kills nine, but is shot in the back by Zaps. Nine does clean that up, though. Vanok and Burn getting some kills. River Oyster going to sit in apartments, grab that bar. He sees Vanok captured that uh, middle flag, so he's going to play slow now. Wait to see if he can grab Vanok around the corner. He cannot. Vanok gets him in the back. Vinok running into this blue room area. Meanwhile, Corey killing LZL. And there we go. Vinok getting another kill. Grabs the SCG instead of reloading and uses it to kill Duality. River Oyster able to kill him. R11 does capture that long area. One of the things with long, long is very fast capture. So while it is not instantaneous, if you do not break it within the, like, the first half second or something, you will not break it at all. You can still kill them while it's not fully captured, and it will round up into a captured state. Now, as you can see, we have a lot more scores here because on this map, River Oyster getting a double kill in those apartments. Kills Rafina and Zaps. Uh, it's unable to get Vinok, though. Uh, as you can see, a lot more scoring involved on this map because these this map awards points for capture of the flag, not just holding the flag like RR2. Burn, rocking the Tommy again. My man. As a fellow Tommy player, I love it. 
<laughs> gets the kill on head like a whole Pibian with a nice no scope killing burn though. It's always uh, nice to watch a sniper get a no scope. It's never nice to be on the end of a sniper getting a no scope. Sean sees a grenade fly out of blue room, so he knows Rafina's in there. Rafina, though, is at the top of the stairs instead of the bottom and able to clean up as he chose to try to break that middle flag, but Nine is waiting for him with a car 98. Burn, though, does kill Nine. Let's see if him can get that kill on the sniper all the way across long. He does get two hits on him. And yes, I will continue watching Burn on the Tommy. Tommy players stick together. Man, from Big Window kills uh, head like a hole. Meanwhile, Nine gets a double kill and sprays the ground, establishing dominance in that apartment. LZL waiting for Nine as he comes through. Zaps also waiting for him as he comes through that swing door. Sean thinks someone is in that upper tree room, and he is waiting in those double windows. Checking all three exits. He sees Corey run into the bottom, so he's now going to shift over to Connector. Corey does die to Rafina, so now he has some intelligence. He's going to nade that lower. Sees him come up into the upper window, but Rafina is too quick. Is able to get that kill. Nine's grenade, though, does clean out Rafina. Nine pushed up into tree room with a car 98. LZL, though, walls him out of there. So nine uh, was not sneaky. That grenade kill gave away his position, right? And LZL unloads his thing as a blind attempt and ends up succeeding. Vinok gets a kill on Corey. Insomniac here with a quick lead, though. And they're continuing to build up this lead. River Oyster gets a kill. Vinok, unfortunately, kills his teammate in blue room. River Oyster grabs that car 98. No one is in that middle flag, but he checked every corner just to be sure. Oh, and he misses it! Can he redeem himself? No, he gets a pistol kill. I'm not going to count that as a redemption. If you got the spade kill, come talk to me, but until then... Pibian sitting in the loft looking at that swing door. Meanwhile, Nine over here, waiting around the corner as Rafina. Nine consistently not going apartments. Nine is consistently going into this tree area. He gets one kill, two kills, three kills, grabs that flag, dies, but it doesn't matter because he grabbed the flag, allowing River Oyster to grab that middle flag. And Insomniac, funnily enough, on map two, this is the first cap out we have seen all match. And so it's on the third half, so we are... A good uh, 45 minutes into playing DoD, and we finally see a cap out, and it goes the way of Insomniac Gamers. Now 9 is going long. 9 is going everywhere but middle, and it, as you can see in the kill feed, 9 doesn't need to go middle. River Oyster over there getting three kills in that middle area. Says, 9, go help out other places. I got this. Meanwhile, 9 kills Burn as he comes through, and he and Head Like a Hole are going to capture this long flag. Vinok waiting for head like a hole. Nope, that's Nine coming through. Kills Nine as he comes through. Nine was going for that middle flag. Head like a hole still over here. Vinok thinks he's in the loft area, but he is not. Pibian is waiting for him at the swing at those double doors. Zaps playing a little scared at this point. They are definitely on the back foot. River Oyster, 62 health, going to try to standing STG over into those things. <laughs> and and Vinok uh, makes him pay for it. Rafina, 3 HP. Corey has 100 HP, but it doesn't matter necessarily in this game when you're facing rifles that can kill you in one hit. As we see, Rafina's 3 HP does win out over Corey's 100. Burn rushing up that long. They do not have control of this long. So Burn kills head like a hole, comes back. Uh, no one is there with him, so he is not going to try to cap it. Instead, he's going to push up that ramp until he gets the call from man that he is ready to capture. Then they're going to go back and capture that flag. Zaps pushing into that middle, mid area. 
Meanwhile, Pibian gets a double kill on long, so Insomniac should be able to recap that long flag anytime they want. Vinok getting a double kill on both heavies and a triple kill on Sean as he runs through that blue room. Let's see if we can find him. Uh, no, he died to head like a hole right as he came through. So really good spree by Vinok, but unable to really establish himself up near the spawn of the Axis. Meanwhile, Zaps, that wall does not protect you, my guy, as Sean is able to kill him coming through that, uh, coming around that corner. LZL over here, so they subbed LZL in, and uh, LZL is a little, is not quite as warm, right? He didn't play uh, for the past hour at least, so uh, he might have a little bit of warming up to do. Duality throwing a nade into that big window. Head like a hole, looking all over the place. Finds one and, well, well, but is unable to get the kill as Rafina in upper tree is able to pick him off. Rafina sees a couple in those double windows, but uh, Zaps is able to get the kill. Corey down low in back cave. Burn's grenade gets him, but Sean is able to kill uh, Burn. Meanwhile, uh, we have R11 in control of the well, and Insomniac in control of Long. Vinok runs through the <laughs> right in the departments, waiting for Sean. Sean gets three kills, shooting the toes of man. Uh, Burn, though, the fourth one there. Uh, head like a whole Dutch trade it, but Sean gets three kills out of that life, so should provide a little bit of breathing room for Insomniac. Can Insomniac capture this well? Rafina is doing a really good job holding this well. There we see Rafina and Man getting two kills again. Corey, though, picks up a double kill from that boardwalk area. We have two car 98s and a sniper in this well, so Insomniac is definitely trying to capture it. They're going to go and try to capture. They do get it. Corey, though, getting four or five kills this life before Zaps is able to kill him in connector. Sean also dies to Rafina, so now it's just Pibian. He gets one. They know he's here. They're trying to wall him. And yeah, uh, LZL does a nice swing out to kill Pibian out of that connector area. Nine down in Batcave does pick up a kill. Oh, sorry, not Batcave. He's up for apartments at Swing Door. I'm not quite sure what this mouse movement for nine is. Maybe it's to to keep him uh, keep him knowing where the head's gonna come. But he has a nice little. Back and forth. You know, maybe that's just HLTV because Zaps is doing the same thing and it doesn't feel like something multiple players would do. <laughs> Vinok has no time for this nonsense. Kills nine and instantly runs through apartments. Vinok lost his grenade though, killing Zaps. And uh, Sean comes in, gets a kill on Vinok. That's always frustrating when uh, when you feel like you should have them as they come around the corner and they just shoot once and you're dead. R11 captures that long, but Corey is waiting for them at box. <laughs> Man, though, gets the shot onto Corey. I'm not sure if that was a no-scope or a scope shot, but that one definitely was a scope shot as he kills nine coming into that bench area. Can he get three kills? He missed the shot with the car 98. Doing a couple peeks here. Going to jump into the loft to try to get a new angle, or at least fake that he's getting a new angle. Meanwhile, R11 slowly getting some map control. They now have control of both double caps, and Pibian is able to kill out man from that bench area. Burn, though, quickly replaces him. Vinok, Rafina, we're getting multiple kills from R11. We see Vinok get another kill as he comes out, but Head Like a Hole sitting in L is able to kill him as he comes around. Uh, Burn, though, gets the kill coming down from bench. Rafina with the car 98 gets a kill from underpass. Zaps gets the kill on himself with a grenade. That's, that's a bummer. And nine uh, sitting there making sure no one comes into that thing, but Rafina does get a dead nade kill. On to River Oyster. Meanwhile, Insomniac just preventing the cap out. They know they have the lead. There's uh, about eight minutes left, so they know that they can play a little bit slower. They have the lead. They can just make sure they don't get capped out on and eventually get some map control back.
Corey does kill Burn. There is Mand, I think, is in the loft. Corey does know he's there. Okay. Corey gonna bail and go underpass. Misses his shot. That's a rough. So he's gonna fall back again. So now he has uh, Pibian, though. Gets the no scope on the man. Uh, I'm gonna give him the fact that that was a no scope. I don't know if I'm right or not. I'm gonna assume. Now Corey and Pibian are gonna try to cap that long, and they will be successful. Corey and uh, Burn gets one, but too little, too late. LZL sitting up here, holding that well from top of tree. And we have just a bunch of... They're, they're playing a lot slower than they did earlier in the game. Both teams have really slowed down their rate of play here. Burn going to try throwing a grenade down at that L area. <laughs> Pibian sitting in loft. Burn able to get to the box. But Pibian... Or the, sorry, that was 9 with a sniper rifle. 9 able to outweigh him and get the kill. Zap sitting there with a car 98 gives River Oyster a taste of his own medicine of running into a car into apartments. Meanwhile, Pibian does have that uh, the actual sniper rifle and is able to get a double kill. Rafina, nice headshot on Pibian in that connector area. Not before Pibian got a third, though, so three kills for Pibian that life. And if we look at the scores, we can see Rafina has... Uh, is night and day from his ally half last half on that R2 map. He is now dropping 28 kills. He has uh, become a, the Rafina we expected him to be. Uh, it just took him the second map to get there. Had like a whole double kill with that MP40. Meanwhile, R11 still has control of this well. Corey gonna grab... Uh, sorry, had like a whole gonna grab that middle flag while Corey grabs a kill. And head like a hole going to push back to his double windows. To where he just dies to connector. I'm sorry, to River Oyster. River Oyster killed him. I don't think people were anticipating head like a hole going to the, his side of the map after grabbing that middle flag. But he did, and it did not work out for him. Vinox sees someone down long hallway. LZL getting a nice pistol kill on 9. Uh, we got two R11 members. They're going to try to cap that uh, long flag. And like I said, it's a very fast cap. So even though there are axes all around them, they're able to get that flag. And four kills. That's four kills for R11. Can they get this fifth kill on Pibian? Yes, they can. So now we have five members dead. Burn going to run in for that. Uh, but Head Like a Hole was there. And both the two... Uh, Two allies rush in. Rafina is able to get the flag as Vanok unfortunately gets domed in, in the in the head as he dies on that flag. But Rafina was there for the capo, and now just like that, remember I said Insomniac needs to make sure they don't get capped on. Own. Just like that, we are at a ten point differential with four, three, three and a half minutes left of this half. So this half has basically been evened up at this point. Either team can establish a nice lead. Here, Corey gets a double kill in those apartments. Jumps out into well. Uh, so they're capping both flags simultaneously. R11 grabs that long flag. And Insomniac grabs that well. Burn over here could grab the middle flag. Choosing not to. Does not want to give away his position. His buddy behind him could also grab it. But not doing. Burn sees a grenade fly right at him. Does 95 damage to him. And he is able to escape out of there. Sean gets a kill on Rafina in that uh, that connector area, but Rafina's grenade does kill him. Cleaning up LZL uh, is head like a hole. LZL had a nice run right to blue room, but head like a hole was there to prevent it. Corey, on the other hand, going to push into that red room. Man. Coming over here, knows there's people over there. Cannot find anyone. Meanwhile, Pibian looking as well. Can't find anyone. So now, Pibian going to run over here to Long. So now we can get maybe a sniper duel. Maybe we can find each other. Burn going to push through. Man, uh, Pibian is up here. Meanwhile, Zaps 
spamming there. Oh no! River Oyster gets a kill on Vinok. River Oyster then kills uh, Zaps, but Corey's grenade takes out River Oyster. So River Oyster cleans out apartments, and then Corey cleans out River Oyster. So uh, remember how we said Corey was the sleeper agent? He's continuing to do that. He's killed far more R11 than Insomniac players, though, so not a very good sleeper agent. Man, nice shot on Pibian's foot there. He's going to run up into that, look at that big box. He finds a, a shoulder, did not get the hit, though. That is head like a hole. Oh, he hit head like a hole, and then pulls out, and one deeks head like a hole right in the head. That was a beautiful sequence from man, killing the Axis Sniper, finding the uh, Axis Third, uh, walling him, unable to get the kill with the Sniper, and instead just gets a one-shot headshot on him with his pistol. Pinoc, uh, Vinok getting a kill on Pibian at the spawn. Man takes off Corey's head. Then gets nine as he comes around. We're looking for R11 is looking to apply some pressure. Uh, man does not get that no scope. Head like a hole is able to uh, guard his first flag, and the Axis captured that middle flag to make sure no one can get capped out on. So Axis do have control of this well. LZL is literally sitting on it. Sean gets a double kill, making sure that they do not capture that well though. And make that three for Sean as he is in apartments with a car. Going to run into that swing door area. He's going to look for burn through this big window. Did not see him, so he's going to push up. But Mand was waiting for him. River Oyster, though, down here underneath. And they knew he was here. Vinok with the falling bar shot. Nine finally able to clean up burn out of that bench area. But Corey sitting up here in connector with a car 98. Going to prime this thing. We see the tick points. Allies get three. Axis score two. So uh, we are slowly closing the gap uh, for our 11 here. Uh, Corey unable to get any kills from his connector push. R11 really needs to focus on this well, and we see LZL jump in there. They're now going to try to capture this well. And they do. They get that point. They they do get that well capture. They are only now down uh, by... Oh, they got a tick! Right at the end, they got a tick! Oh my god, that huge! That was huge! They are now only down by one because they got five points right at the tick there. Oh, man! That is... That could be very, very prevalent for uh this uh this match that could be extremely prevalent that they are only down by one point instead of the six points that they are if it comes down to a very close half again that could be a huge tick that they captured well right at the end there and then instantly got the tick points for them that could be absolutely game breaking or it could not matter at all right? Depending on uh, how this half goes. So they're essentially even in this half, right? They are essentially, uh, they are essentially tied up. There's only one point difference between Insomniac and uh, R11 here. So uh, remember, if R11 loses this match, they are out of KTP Silver uh, playoffs. Insomniac will move on to the semifinals. If uh, R11 is able to pull out this Lennon match. They, we will then go to Anzio for the deciding match. One of my favorite things about this map is that little skyline right there. I really feel like you should be able to throw a grenade out of that little window and have it go into... Let's see. Let's quickly... It resets. There's something wrong with my config that it just blows my ears out every time I reload the map. I feel like... Where's Lurf? Lurf, why did you not make this a gr little grenade throw that we could do? That'd be so cool. Maybe we can do it, and I'm just dumb. I 
I know I shared this trivia about this map before, but this map was made by one of the premier uh, community map makers in the Dave Defeat 1.3 community mr lurf himself and this map actually got him a job offer to actually make maps on a full release game so uh this map was a resume builder for lurf and this is a remake of the map uh using different textures and different lighting to make it a little easier to see on so we are live second half going on here nine is not going to jump through the big window. Sometimes a bar will rush through that big window to try to get the jump on log. Instead, Vinok throws a grenade and instantly kills himself. He outran his own grenade. LZL sees a prone, I guess, River Oyster over there. And he is going to uh, back off a little bit, throw his grenade. River Oyster, on the other hand, 73 health, throws his whole grenade. And Weiss and Corey gets a knife kill on the sniper. What a, what a play. I'm glad we missed it. Uh, he gets a knife kill on that sniper in that sniper loft. He's going to push up to those stairs. Gets a kill on Zaps from those stairs. Grabs another kill on that sniper. He's now at three kills. And he gets a fourth kill. He now has control. He is in L. He has control of this first flag. Meanwhile, Insomniac Gamers using Corey's map pressure to now have the space to try to pick up that uh, well. And they do. Burn is able to get a double kill as R11 uh, comes out of their spawn. But Corey, with his big... Big uh, push there, got five kills for that life, is able to hold R11 in their spawn, allowing Insomniac to get massive map control. Sean going to throw a grenade into that blue room. We see uh, either Nine or River Oyster, one of the heavies sitting up in those double windows, just kind of waiting them out. They do have control of both flag captures. That's River Oyster up there. Had like a hole, eight health, kills the man. Corey kills uh, LZL, and we see Nine pushing up into that area, gets a kill on Burn, while Head Like a Hole is going to play a little safer because he only has eight health. We see Pibian come over, get a kill, and instantly traded Sniper's together nine on the other hand jumps in three kills out of that l uh pibian tells him exactly where they are comes around throws down his bar grabs a car takes the last shot does a nice little prone dive right onto that flag instantly capping out and we are at a 79 to 2 advantage so i said that little last well cap last uh last ma half could be a huge thing because it brought the point differential to only one insomniac is making sure that is not going to be an issue for this half they do not want it to come down to be that close and insomniac seems to have hit a new gear on this fourth half of dod that we've played tonight and they are really putting the pressure on r11 they're going to run here and cap that uh, that long flag as well. It might just be that, uh, you know, Insomniac likes Allied Half on Lennon a lot better than they like Axis. And I know for a fact River Oyster loves the bar far more than he loves uh, that SDG. Pibian sees two of them come out of spawn, gets one. He was hoping for that double kill, that, that penetration kill, but it was not in the cards. And stuck. Manned and LZL picking up a kill on nine and Sean. We see LZL trying to capture this well flag. And they do. They uh, The R11 is able to get control of this well area. LZL going to go into that red room as a tries to hold it. Sean coming connector. Sees LZL, but LZL is waiting for him. And LZL wins that battle. Gets a second kill on Akori. Vinok gets a kill on to nine. He does have 33 health, though, from a grenade exploding near him. And River Oyster, making use of the prone key, is able to get that kill. Rafina punishes him, captures that middle flag. Pibian, though, with the no-scope, able to cap the flag right back. Gets a second no-scope kill on Zaps. And a third kill on LZL. That one was with the scope. He's going to check that L hallway. And he sees one, and he misses. And because of that miss, Burn is able to clean, uh, get him uh, out of that bench area and, and the menace there. Sean, we see Rafina do a very exaggerated blow backwards from Sean's nade as Corey gets a kill on Mand. 
Vinok double kill on the Stoss. So Vinok has decided the uh, the SDG is not for him this half, and he has switched over to the Stoss and instantly gets a double kill. R11 is able to capture both double caps at this point, so they should be getting some tick points. But again, Insomniac already has a cap out to their name. So R11 will have to re respond in kind if they hope to even come out of this game the victor. Burn with the bar, crouch walking into the allied loft. They do have control, and he sees and he gets Pibian as he runs into the loft. So patience from Burn allows him to get that kill onto Pibian, and he's going to push up into that back cave area. Meanwhile, Sean and uh, someone else trying to capture that well back. Sean gets a kill on Vinok in that underpass area, and they are able to get that <laughs> that capture. Man falls back taking out Sean before he can wreck Sue Havoc. We see Nine and Pibian trying to get Burn out of that uh, thing and head like a hole. So they send three uh, people, Insomniac does, into that under apartment area. Rafina misses, unfortunate. Can he get it? He can! He missed this shot. He comes up, pulls out the spade. He cuts Nine's head off. He pulls the car out. He kills Pibian down across it. Rafina, 90 by... Uh, by that grant, Abel comes up, gets that third kill. That is a huge turn of events. Meanwhile, he grabs that first flag. R11 on a spree does have control of both first flags, going to capture that well. Needs to capture the f allied first again as the allies have respawned and was able to recapture it. Rafina over here with that spade kill, with that flick shot, with that other capture able to try to hold on from swing door and see if he can apply some pressure to capture that first flag. Sees a grenade run right at him. He only has 10 health, so he is not able to get away in time. Insomniac, uh, we see Corey and Sean repelling the R11 front from capping that first flag. LZL gets a kill, but is instantly taken out by Pibian. And Head Like a Hole is able to get that middle flag. So Insomniac has just a little bit more breathing room as Man kills River Oyster out of that big window. Rafina sees one of them in uh, well. Actually sees both of them capture well, but is unable to break it. Does kill Corey and Sean, though, so they can recap this if they want to. But I don't think Rafina has a buddy. He does. He does have a buddy. So they're going to jump in. And River Oyster kills himself with his grenade. So that took a bounce he did not want them to want it to take. And R11 is going to capitalize on that by capturing that well and getting a kill on Sean as he comes through connector. Vinox switches over to that Stoss and instantly having a much bigger impact. And R11 gets both uh, the middle and the uh, thing, and they get a nice cap out. And that brings them within striking distance. They are now only down by seven points for this half, meaning they're only down by eight points total since they only lost the first half by one. This is extremely back and forth. Insomniac Gamers having a lot of map control, but R11 multiple times have provided a push that gets them a cap out, bringing the score very close. River Oyster is a little ticked off, it seems like, and he is taking his aggression out on apartments. LZL, though, double kill. Remember I said LZL was coming in off the bench. He might have been a little bit uh, not warmed up in the first half, and now he's turned it on. 12-12-12, take that to the casino. He has uh, a score that is all the same. Corey with his car 98 going down into that underpass area. Are they going to try to capture this well? They are. They're going to try to capture the well. Will they get it? Yes, they will. Corey does kill Burn before Burn's grenade does blow up. So a little trade off there. R11 looking to recapture this, but Insomniac did respawn. They are on their way. And they get it right as they come through the connector. Unfortunate timing for Insomniac. Right as they get there, the flag was captured. Had like a hole in a little battle with Mand here. Pibian waiting for Mand in those apartments, though. 
Pibian and Head Like a Hole going to try to capture this long flag. Burn says no, I'm going to try to break it, but uh, there were three of them there. So Insomniac does get control of that long double cap. Nine throws his grenade away, jumps out into that well to try to capture it. We see Rafina kill River Oyster out of that underpass. And Insomniac Gamers does not want this game. They want that breathing room. Sean is going to try to push up. He's going to run for it. And man, with a double kill, gets the headshot on nine. That bullet continues through, kills Sean. Man is able to hold control of that first flag. That was a huge, huge, huge shot by man preventing that cap out. That was two members of Insomniac Gaming coming in for the prone dive. And man, with one bullet, saves that cap out. Giving, keeping R11 in the game, Insomniac going to have to mount another push, all from one pull of the trigger of man, clutch shot, never seen anything more clutch. He is on fire when it comes, R11 has turtled up perfectly in both of these maps, and that we just see it happen again. Insomniac unable to get that last cap out, and every time Insomniac has gotten a cap out, R11 has responded in kind. River Oyster pushing up into blue room gets two kills. He sees one. He's gonna try to can he get that third kill? He can't. He's gonna pull out his pistol, gonna run away, and Zaps gets him with the pistol. That was to have been a very frustrating turn of events for both Zaps and River Oyster, as they both just missed each other with the entire clip. We see a uh, duality in that underpass gets picked off by Rafina. Rafina also picks off head like a hole. So Insomniac's push from underpass is cut short. Allies, though, are holding because they were going for that cap out. They got those extra tick points. So they are increasing their lead just through ticks. There's about eight minutes left. This game is far from over. R11 trying to capture that uh, well area, and they do. Sean in connector is able to kill Rafina and is able to kill LZL. There's one in Boardwalk, it looks like. Probably Vinok. Uh, Zaps is taken out from uh, Sh Sean underneath. And they're going to try to recapture this uh, well. But Vinok is able to clean that up. Insomniac, though, does pick up the long flag. So they went for both double caps at the same time. Only got one of them. So right now, with control of that middle courtyard area... The allies are getting two or three points every tick. R11 is only getting two points every tick. And so we see every 30 seconds, Insomniac is increasing their lead by one point. Zaps comes through, gets a double kill with his MP40. Had like a hole over here, pushed up through long. He's going to try to go, and my LZL was waiting for him at those boxes. Again, is getting close to trying to pick up that cap out. Man misses the flag, and he gets it again. Another clutch shot from Man preventing that cap out. Pibian unable to get the prone dive off. Vanak is able to kill Kellen out of those apartments, it looks like. Rafina is able to kill Nine, uh, and we see, again, the push from Insomniac Gaming ends at the trigger finger of man with his sniper he's getting the perfect the spawns the flicks the 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 nice shots to prevent insomniac gaming from succeeding on these cap outs insomniac gaming though needs to keep up the pressure because as they keep up the pressure they are increasing their lead r11 is doing making sure they're not getting a big chunk uh behind but they are slowly ticking further and further and further behind they're now 27 points behind just from ticks alone r11 uh do we have another one going? Can man get this second, this, this, this thing? Oh, Rafina is there. Rafina is there to make sure that there is no prone dive attempt. Corey in blue room. Man does kill him through the wall. Pibian does kill uh, Rafina, but LZL does have his back. And it looks like r 11 is going to try to get, they need a flag cap. They desperately need a flag cap. Because right now they're getting no tick points. Meanwhile, the allies are getting five points a tick. Burn does kill nine out of there. R11 desperately needs to find a way to not only have this nice turtle defense, but find a way to capture uh, both of these double caps. 
They need some map control. They need to apply pressure. We see Sean getting three kills in that underpass area. Is Sean... He gets his fourth kill, but it's on his own teammate. Oh, no. His uh, backup is gone, and he is unable to get that thing. He does kill LZL as he comes through, but Sean was a little trigger happy there, killing Pibian as he goes. LZL does uh, nine, getting three kills, though. Vanok able to prevent nine from coming down. And uh, and we see one more in that underpass. Insomniac Gaming keeping the pressure up. R11 on their back foot this entire time. Corey on the underpass gets one kill before man takes him out. This is nuts. This is getting to the point where Insomniac Gaming should have had like four cap outs by now. And R11 just refuses to go down at their first flag. We see a couple more kills. Vinok is able to kill, had like a whole nine, does kill Zaps. Pibian does die on those stairs. And Rafina holding back. But again, five more points to the allies as every 30 seconds, Insomniac Gamer, while they're not able to get this cap out, they are getting five points further and further. And they went from having a 27 point lead not too long ago to now they have a 47 point lead. So, uh,. While they're not getting those uh, cap outs, they are slowly putting this game away. We're at four minutes left. There's still plenty of time for R11 to reestablish map control for them to get a cap out of their own and to win not only this half of Lenin, but to win the second map altogether and to force that third deciding Anzio game. Sean, nice shot from the upper thing, but it did not kill him in underpass. Now he does. He gets the shot on LZL. Two very nice shots from Sean, but Rafina sitting in boardwalk is able to clean him out. Corey does get that kill. Picks up a car, but Zaps is waiting for him. Man uh, is taken out by a grenade by head like a hole. And Zaps gets a kill on River Oyster, preventing him from coming down that long hallway. That's now three dead on Insomniac's aiming, and they just spawn, so that's 10 seconds of three dead. Can R11 get any sort of map control? They get the middle flag. Vinok jumping out. They're going to try to capture this well. And they do get that well. Okay, 192 to 135. We're at about 57 points behind at this point but they have established a little bit of map control now they're going to get three points every tick and the allies are only going to get two pibian making sure they don't capture that long flag as well but Mand is there. They have three members of R11 trying to capture this long flag. River Oyster pokes out of those double doors, but because they have three members, the River Oyster's one kill doesn't really matter. Zaps turns around for some reason. Duality was at the first flag, but Zaps kills him before he can cap it. And we have Head Like a Hole on defense, 18 health. Man gets a kill on Pibian th through that swing door. Now it's now the tables have turned. Now R11 is the one, the aggressor. Oh, man, nice shot on Pibian. A second kill on Pibian. Oh, with a nice no-scope on Sean's foot. Nine does kill Zaps, though, and Nine is able to come up those spiral staircase to get Man out of that swing door area. Vanok does kill Nine. Uh, preventing him from re-getting that middle flag. This is in, we're at 145 to 194. We have a minute and a half left. So, can R11, they need a cap out. They need a cap out to have any sort of hope. This is do or die for R11. They have to put the pressure on. They have to have this, this cap out. Otherwise, they will be eliminated. Man gets a kill on nine. Pibian sitting in here and uh, knows Mand is up there. Sees him, but unfortunately was not in his scope. And Mand was, so Mand gets the kill. We have uh, River Oyster trying to uh, kill Mand. He does from that big window. And Rafina gets River Oyster. That, that's it! That's a cap out! That's a cap out! That's a cap out for all 11! They are now up! 211 to 196! There is 58 seconds left! That was it! That was a huge push from our, our 11. Rafina gets that kill on River Oyster in middle, and he's able to jump down, grab that middle flag. Let's cap out 212 to 197. They only lost by one point last half. They are now up by 15 points. Our 11, they just need to make sure that Insomniac cannot push up too fast. And they are! They're getting these kills! They're gonna force a game three! R11 is gonna force a game three! Insomniac's not gonna be able to gap on this time! 215 to 
199. 26 seconds left. Sean, we, Insomniac racking up the kills, but I don't think it matters. They're up by 15 points. They only lost by one point last half. Nine gonna capture this this uh this well area. Insomniac also going for the long. They are going for that cap out. There's five seconds left. 215 to 202. That's it! That's it! That's game! 217 to 205! R11 did it! They pushed out! They got that cap out! They forced a game three! That was utter insanity! And it all goes back to the turtle power of R11! Man, not allowing Insomniac Gaming to get that cap out. Oh my god, what an ending! And we're going to game three. We're going to Anzio. Oh my god. Tied up one map apiece. That is utter insanity. We are going to one of the classics. One of the actual classic maps of day defeat for game three. Having it decided on Anzio, could it be any more perfect? Could it be any more storybook for the Brazilian sensations of R11 pushing through as the five seed in this, losing that first map, having a very big comeback in that second one, allowing them right at the end of both halves, having big flat captures at the end of both halves, making it so they force this game three. We are truly in a best of three at this point. I am sweating. I'm not even lying when I tell you I am sweating. LZL comes in, second map. First half of the second map, takes a while. He's like six and 12. He is not doing well with the grand. Second half, he is one of the top fraggers on r 11 side. That is huge. LZL comes in for Matt. Vinox switches over to a to an automatic. R11 switches it up, and they are able to force the game three on the back of Man's incredible turtle power. Absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. We are going to watch one of the default maps of DoD. This is not a custom map. Most of our maps are custom. Most of our maps were made by the community. This one, made by Valve. This one, made by the developers of DoD. It is fitting that it comes all the way down. This best of three comes all the way down to one of the classic DoD maps of DoD Anzio. A map where we have two very distinctive sides. Lennon does also have two sides, but there's a lot more rotation. Anzio, on the other hand, we're going to have a tail of two halves. We're gonna have the bridge half. We're gonna have the plaza half. We're gonna have snipers going wherever they feel like they can have the most impact. We're gonna have grenades flying. We're gonna have a game three of DOD action in this KTP quarterfinal or KTP silver quarterfinal action. If you are, uh, if you know friends that like good day of defeat, you need to get them in here. This is incredible DOD that we are watching, and we are being blessed with a game three from the backs of R11. Can Insomniac bounce back from that nail biter of a game two? Can R11 continue their momentum as they push through on this DoD Anzio, a much larger map than Lennon, a map that requires a lot more teamwork or, or at least different teamwork than Lennon does, a map that is all about timing? Can we see 
the comeback be real after an almost dominant game one performance from Insomniac Gamers R11 forces the game three. We are waiting. We have all 12 members in the server. We are waiting for them to exec and ready up, and we will get underway. Now is the time if you need to go to the bathroom. Now is the time. Go fast. Grab your water. Grab your popcorn because we're settling in for a do-or-die situation for both teams, and we are going to all be the better for it. We see R11 typing in ready. We are just waiting on Insomniac. We have all six players. It looks like R11 is running with the same six from last game. LZL going to stay in the lineup. We're just waiting on Insomniac to type ready. One of their members must be taking a bathroom break. Don't blame them. We've had two big games of DoD already. We are entering third. This is a lot of DoD for these teams to be playing. Now it gets to the point of fatigue. Now it gets to the point of eyes getting tired. Now it gets to the point of uh, bladders being full. Now it gets to the point where little things that can be going on that you don't normally have to deal with in a best of one, little things that don't normally happen in 40 minutes of gameplay, now can start affecting them as we go into our third match. Match is now live. We are looking at Anzio. We are looking at a big battle of rifles on the bridge, heavies in plaza, with snipers usually turning the tide on either side, whichever one they go to. Rafina gonna grab his first flag. It looks like he's going bridge with his car 98. He's gonna throw a grenade and he is right Rushing to the corner. He gets a kill on Corey as he comes through Z. Pibian, it looks like, has gone and sniped Plaza while Rafina throws a grenade into that allied beach house. And they're going to try to capture that bridge. Meanwhile, allies get control of the plaza. So we trade back and forth. We trade those uh, those middle flags. Meanwhile, man waiting for River Oyster as he comes through Ivy. Uh, we have R11 having control of that mid flag as well. <laughs> LZL grabs the grand and takes off head like a hole. Vinox sitting here in double windows. Rafina double kill. Vinox gets one kill, but River Oyster sitting in plaza waiting for him. Man gonna sit here with his scope, waiting for someone to peek out of that allied loft. Burn waiting for him to come across, but River Oyster sprint is able to get him out of the crosshairs and able to trade that. Zap sitting in sundial knows River Oyster is in plaza. LZL sees one on bridge, but head like a hole gets the kill. River Oyster over here under those double windows. Head like a hole, only 5 HP behind Tiki. One grenade will take him out. 
And there it is. Nope, it bounced a little too far, so he is still alive and alive enough to get a kill on Mand in that meat house. But Rafina's pistol finally cleans him up. Rafina gets a second kill, taking off Cory's head. Cory thought he was safe with the bridge covering him, and Rafina a little too accurate for that. Burn, nine coming through Ivy. Burn is able to evade the bullet shots, turn around, and take out nine. Now he's going to rush in, show in that uh, plaza, and Sean uh, is able to kill him there. Oh, it was actually Corey. Corey's grenade killed him. Sean, meanwhile, double kill on that bridge side. Sees one, and then they have a little back and forth on that Tiki. And Rafina, using his pistol, is able to get a kill. And then switches back to the card to get a second kill on head like a hole. R11 continuing to hold this uh, bridge side. Meanwhile, Insomniac continuing to hold the plaza side with R11 having control of that middle flag. So R11 slowly getting more ticks. They are up 17 to 11 at this point. So they are, because they both have a double cap, it comes down to the middle deciding who gets more points. And R11 slowly building up one tiny little lead. Although Anzio is a match that cap outs, while this map is large, cap outs can come very quickly out of nowhere. And points can swing very heavily. We saw that already in the in the regular season. Insomniac gamers were down on this map for a very long time. 37 minutes out of 40 minutes they were down on this map. And they were able to turn around in the last 3 minutes. And get I think 3 or 4 cap outs against Team 3H to win that match. So we see that this map can be very swingy. Can uh, It's not over until it's over. R11 does get control of that plaza, though. Corey's nade a little too late, killing Vinok. Corey going to sit here on grass, wait for them to try to pass it out. He's then going to look at rope. I guess someone called him. Meanwhile, Zaps gets a kill on head like a hole. Corey looking all over the place, finally finds one. But it's Rafina, and Rafina's waiting for him with that uh, thing. Meanwhile, LZL in jump window. And he's going to jump out, and he's going to try to get it, but River Oyster waiting for him as it comes through. But Rafina coming from bridge side, River Oyster unable to look both in front and behind him at the same time. And R11, while they just threw bodies at the last flag, and they were able to get the first cap out of this third map. Man knows Pibian's in the loft. Cannot see him, though. Grenade flies at Man's face, causing him to fall back. Pibian able to get a kill, but Rafina is able to clean him up. Zaps sitting here, waiting on him to come around the corner. Nine comes around the corner, and Zaps is there. Jumps down, grabs Nine's bar. Meanwhile, LZL has respawned, going back to bridge. Sean gets a kill on Burn. <laughs> Gonna grab that middle flag. Decides he doesn't want the smoke from uh, that bar firing at him. Vinok with a car. Is Vinok running the car? He is. Vinok has switched over to the car. He ran autos last match. Chooses not to capture that middle flag because he wants to make sure Sean does not turn around. Sean gets a kill on man, but Vinok, uh, choosing to forego that flag capture, is able to get the drop on Sean. Pibian going back up to his loft. And takes off LZL. A great timing by Pibby in there. Rafina's nade does take him out, though. But Insomniac have both double caps. So they should be ticking up some points here. And there we go. Allies get four points. Axis got one for their middle flag capture. We see grenades flying all over the place. Axis going to try to capture this middle, uh, the plaza, but Nine and Sean kill both the people attempting it. So, uh, successful defense of that plaza. Man sitting here in a meat locker. Gets a kill, but every time he goes through those doors, everyone can hear it. And meanwhile, Insomniac now has control of all the flags. They just have to push up and try to get that last flag. Nine over there on main ramp, unable to get a kill. LZL takes him out. The entire R11 team seems to be at this flag. Sean trying to ninja, but Zaps is waiting for him, like I said. It seems like the whole team is looking all over the place for him. Man sitting there in a very precarious position. 
and and then while he's trying to figure out his positioning, Pibian comes up in the loft and is able to wonder what he's doing and take him out. Get another tick of points for Insomniac there. Nine gets zapped as he jumps out of the uh, double windows. And since they control that flag, he's not showing where he is, but it doesn't matter because Vinok has a car waiting for him on main ramp. We see Insomniac racking up the kills here. Absolutely racking up the kills. Pibian in one of the best positions for an allied sniper sitting on bridge behind Tiki. He's going to get a couple kills. He's going to push up. Let's see if he trades out for a different gun. He doesn't. He's going in, and they get the cap out. Pibian, uh, the River Oyster called that. He was about to capture that middle, and Pibian says, all right, I'm sprinting up short ramp. He got those nice kills, knew that there was an opening, and he sprints up, and just like that, Insomniac takes the lead, 106 to 99. So it looks like this game is going to be back and forth, just like the last game was. Head like a hole, and oh, beautiful grenade from Vinok there, bouncing right into that thing. But it doesn't matter because uh, Insomniac just throws more bodies at Plaza, and they are able to get that flag capture. Unfortunate for Head like a hole that he was the sacrificial lamb. But that's kind of Head like a hole's role. If you notice, River Oyster proning again. If you notice, Head like a hole never has the the best scores because he is the uh, bait. Head like a hole is usually always the first one through a door, the first one around a corner because he is the kamikaze sacrificial intelligence gatherer for Insomniac. And so he ends up getting uh, not the best K KD ratio, but the information that Head Like a Hole usually provides his team is usually vital for uh, people like Duality or River Oyster or whoever is going his route for them to clean up and to get multiple kills. Meanwhile, Insomniac putting the pressure on. They have all the flags again except for one. Rafina just naded his own guy. So a little bit of confusion in R11's ranks. They don't quite know where to go. Head like a hole gets the kill from Allied Loft. R11 a little discombobulated at this point. <laughs> Burn able to kill Sean on that main ramp though. Head like a hole still sitting in Loft. So he is choosing to play a little bit of goalie here. Making sure that they just don't push up that bridge. He's going to throw a grenade up to that short ramp. Meanwhile, Nine comes through Meat Locker, killing Rafina, and he gets the second kill on LZL, and now he's going up short ramp. Will Nine be able to get that uh, flag? No, Vinok comes up the uh, spawn ramp and is able to kill him before he can get the flag. River Oyster cooking the grenade. Sean kills Zaps, which is the, the target River Oyster was going for. River Oyster going up this main flag. Someone else is going to grab middle, and he's going to rush in to try to grab that first flag, and uh, Rafina is waiting for him. LZL was also there. So that was definitely a coordinated cap-out attempt, as we saw the middle flag get captured almost at the same time that River Oyster was going for that thing. Corey, unfortunately, kills Pibian and instantly picks up his gun. Insult to injury there. <laughs> it's like, sorry, bud. Thanks for the gun. And Rafina is able to kill Corey out of behind that Tiki's can. R11 translate these kills, with the help of Corey, into a uh, bridge cap. They get the middle back, but the middle is just a one-man instant cap, so it's it's nice, but it's not necessary. It's not, like, a great... So you got two members. Vinok kills head like a hole. LZL is capping that bridge flag. That he, someone else came up behind him to cap it with him. And R11 gets a little bit of map control back as Duality goes up into that uh, allied loft, unable to get the kill behind Tiki. River Oyster sees one guy in street. So now he's going to try to get a little bit better positioning. Rafina gets two kills over on her side. River Oyster is able to kill Zaps. Grabs the car 98. Grabs the middle flag. And is instantly killed by Vinok. So nice run by River Oyster. But Vinok uh, does trade it back. And will Vinok gets a second kill on head like a hole. And will he grab that middle flag? Oh, he gets a third kill on nine. So no, he's going kill hunting. And he is over here in Plaza. Someone else from Axis is going to have to grab that middle flag. That's four kills now for Vinok. And a grenade comes in from Duality to finally end his reign of terror. 
Duality picks up a second kill on Zaps. Nine, throwing a grenade into Z. And then gonna run... Nope. Gonna go and check Z with his gun instead. Burn gets a kill on Sean in mid. Nine saw that happen. We'll see if Nine wants to go through Ivy. He's deciding not to going into that plaza area. We have two R11 members in that thing. A nice nade over from grass into that middle would, would work wonders. There seems to be... Pibian seems to be in that tower. LZL is trying his best to take him out. Nine comes under the tower while Pibian was looking up. Oh, it's River Oyster up in the tower. And they are able to kind of tag team and get rid of both axes there. Okay, we have allies pushing on this bridge again. Pibian able to kill Grafina at the end of it. We see Mand over there in Crack killing Hezeka Holes, and Pibian cannot get the angle on him. Finally finds an angle, but it's not Mand, it's LZL. Corey killed Mand instead. And we see River Oyster getting a double kill. That is a lot dead on our 11 side. And we see two instant flag caps, one of bridge, one of mid, from Insomniac. Meaning there are going to be a full-scale rush. Corey, three kills with his grenade on, on things. So it comes down to Rafina, and Rafina dies to nine's nade. Now we just have smooth sailing, except for Vinok and LZL are the only ones there. Those grenades, but they didn't push it with bodies. They threw those grenades, and instead River Oyster going slow, and he plays it slow, and he decides slow is smooth, smooth is fast, fast is another cap out. So we see a nice trade of things leading into a push onto that first flag. Corey gets a perfectly timed grenade going right onto that spawn ramp. Gets three kills. Nine gets the fourth kill. And then River Oyster comes up through Sundial and is able to secure a cap out there. Increasing the lead to almost 90 points. We're at about 91 points uh, difference for Insomniac here. With six minutes left. In the first half. There's still a whole nother half after this. So R11 is not in 100% do or die mode here. But it is getting a little dicey. They're going to want to make sure that they can try to get another cap out to try to even the score up a little. Rafina going down into sewers. Interesting. he going over to church? Yeah, he's going over to church, it looks like. He is. He's going into church. Going into tower, actually. Okay, okay. He's going to try. R11 has control of all the flags except the first one, so Rafina's going to try to establish a little bit of uh, a high ground support here. Sees one blown, but misses the shot, and that gave away his positioning. If they didn't know he was up there, they now know, and Sean is able to spam those walls, killing Rafina. So Rafina, with a little bit of a ninja situation, did not work out in the end. Burn, on the other hand, is also in church and is able to get a double kill on River Oyster and Sean, preventing them from capping that plaza. Zaps over here, <laughs> playing chicken with that middle flag. LZL going to run in, grab it. Or, sorry, that's Vinok. Vinok's going to say, okay, I don't think he's there anymore. Let me just go grab this flag. Nine, playing holy. Making sure no one comes in from beach spawn or from behind him. LZL gets a nice kill on Pibian with a grenade. Rafina pushing up through Z. So now this is where <laughs> Vinok trying to come through, but nine playing goalie, right? Was waiting for him. Zaps gets a nice double kill. From the same place Burn was earlier. Nine only has 25 health, and Grenade will e really easily kill him. LZL up here in Jump Window. Nine right outside Jump Window. I don't know if they know LZL's in Jump Window, or if they're just doing their due diligence. But Corey throws a grenade up there anyway, and it does kill LZL. So uh, I don't know if they were 100% sure that someone was in Jump Window, but they were able to clean him out no anyway. And Corey really playing goalie. He's up in the uh, stove area. Pibian gets one kill on Vinok. 
We have multiple Insomniac gamers over here on the laundry side, making sure they do not get capped out on. Nine gonna push in, trying to uh, cap that <laughs> plaza, but Fern's grenade comes in, killing head like a hole. Nine gonna try to wall uh, whoever is over there. He's he's playing with fire right now. He has no backup. They know exactly where he is, and the grenade is finally able to kill him. Okay, River Oyster cleaning out LZL out of that jump window. Insomniac making sure that no one can get behind them. And they're going to go for it again. River Oyster in the plaza. Gets a nice wall shot on Vinak. Could not see him. Got the shot anyway. Uh, looks like Zaps broke it with his body, but Sean is able to kill him and then kill Rafina. And uh, Insomniac is able to get Plaza and take the foot off their throat a little bit with the threat of a cap out. And then instantly Nat 9 captures the street as well. Has Corey switched over to the bar full time? No, he has just picked it up uh, and maybe hasn't died since last time we saw it. Meanwhile, River Oyster, two kills with the car. You can always assume River Oyster has a car. He will go out of his way to find one. Gets the kill on to burn. Sees another car on short ramp. They definitely know he's here. Head like a hole with the backup from that long ramp. River Oyster gets a kill on LZL. Grabs the first flag. They're not at a threat for cap out. They still need to capture the bridge. But they have control of every flag but the bridge. River Oyster just being a menace here. Spawn camping LZL. The grenade comes in and cleans him out. Can the Axis get control of their first flag again? Rafina, on the other hand, uh, loses control of Laundry. Burn sees a grenade fly past him, decides to wait it out, but Nine swings around with bullets flying, and he runs into that Sundial area. We see Rafina with 33 kills. And uh, Vinok waiting for Nine as Nine made a move to capture that first flag. Meanwhile, Insomniac does get control of the bridge. So that was a concentrated effort with Nine trying to go for the full cap out. R11 does grab control of that middle flag back and successfully defends the cap out though. This game has been a little swingy, and now all of a sudden R11 captures both double caps back at the same time. LZL gonna go to bridge spawn, gonna do a little spawn camping of his own. Sees a grenade fly over his head, and is oh, he's gonna ninja them. But Sean turns, so LZL's ninja is ruined as he has to kill Sean, because Sean saw him. And so now they know exactly where he is, and Pibian is able to come around 1911 flying, and then Pibian kills Man as Man crouch walks through rope. So that one little turn by Sean to go down Rope Alley almost, almost assuredly saved them from a cap out. Even though Sean died, that was that's what I mean by intelligence gathering is just as important as kills sometimes. In fact, most times. And that's the end of the half. 236 to 189. Uh, a little back and forth. Insomniac coming out on top. So 236 to 189. And we go into the last half of this best of three. It all comes down to these 20 minutes of Insomniac sitting on the Axis side, R11 on the Ally side. Insomniac has a cushion. They have, what, about 11, 36, so 47 point cushion. But that is not a lot when it comes to Anzio. You can make that up pretty easily if you are having a really good teamwork a really good push and get a couple cap outs in a short amount of time uh so basically uh r11 just has to win almost by two cap outs or a cap out and a couple holds I forgot to uh, close out the prediction for game two. And we, okay, so here we go. Overall winner. Uh, 
All right, two minutes. Overall winner. Who's going to win this third map? All right, there we go. We have readied up. Here comes the last half of this best of three. We are getting down to the wire. 47 points is all that separates R11 from Insomniac in our best of three. Right away, we see LZL running into that sniper loft area, and he's going to get picked off by Pibby and Sniper. We have two Axis moving into that middle area. River Oyster runs into that main ramp and instantly dies to grenade. Vinok, two HP from those grenades blowing up on him in Plaza, but he is able to take off Duality's head in those double windows and then swing over and get nine as he comes through IV, and that is going to secure a Plaza capture for R11. Meanwhile, uh... Insomniac going to try to capture that bridge, but they accidentally get off of it, so they're going to have to restart that process. And then that uh, little accident getting off of it allows LZL to clean up Corey, preventing that cap out. Zaps sitting here behind church. Duality knows where he is, kills man, kills Zaps, moves into that plaza. Knows one thing, runs away from grenade, is able to escape it, but is not able to escape the angle that Vinok has on him. So Vinok is able to kill Duality before Duality uh, does more. And Vinok's in here, 2 HP again. Uh, so very, very tenuous hold on life there. And he is dead to 9. All right, Burn kills River Oyster. Burn's in here. R11 really likes to send a uh, a bar behind church. We have seen multiple bars behind the church. Nine, two health. So we have a lot of grenades doing a lot of damage, but not getting a lot of kills, which makes the players have to play a little bit differently with two HP as opposed to 100 HP. Corey going to push up to bridge. A grenade flies right at him, and LZL is able to kill Pibian and Corey with just a beautifully banked grenade. Nine does get a double kill on his side, but R11 still has control of this plaza, so uh, Insomniac may be getting kills on this side of the map, but they don't have control of that flag. Meanwhile, no one has control of the bridge flag, uh, so we are having two points to the allies, one point to the Axis every tick at this point. Nine is now going to try to capture it. He goes in, kills Mand out of that plaza area, but Mand was able to get a kill into double windows. Burn cleans up nine. Sean also in double windows. And the Axis finally able to capture that bridge. <laughs> okay, Sean. Long range Luger shots on Burn up that ladder is able to prevent him from getting control of that dark window area. Rafina playing basically cat and mouse with Insomniac's uh, bridge team. He's uh, They're choosing who's going to push when. Meanwhile, Mand holding control over that uh, plaza area. He's going to try to go up into the tower, it looks like. And he is going into tower.
Pavian on the other side is sitting in that crack house area. Burn finds nine prone in meat house and is able to get that kill before nine nine got one bullet on him. 33 37 damage. Uh, Burn opens the door, sees someone in crack, and is able to kill Pibian. Oh, a beautiful pistol pulls out, gets nine as he comes down, grabs nine's gun, but duality is waiting in Sundial for him. So that was a very good play. Grew up pulling out the pistol. Uh, to try to get control of that first flag, giving R11 the map control to then come behind him and capture that bridge. And now we have three uh, flags going the way of R11, and no flags except for their first going the way of Insomniac. A nine taking an SCG into meat means he's got to go down onto this short ramp and play the long game against not only grenades flying, but grands and sniper rifles with an SCG. That is a tall task as LZL sits behind here, gets a shot onto head like a whole in thing, gets a crack shot onto Pibian's head up the ramp, and is able to clean out that first flag as he pushes into meat to try to get control of the street area, finds River Oyster. Camping that meat locker, grabs that middle flag, and now the push is on to try to get a cap out. Uh, Duality is able to clean him up. He's going to cap that 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 flag back, but not before Vinok runs up. V Rafina ends up killing him anyway, but Sean a little too lackadaisical. The communication was not there. Vinok able to get that cap out. And now they have pushed ahead. They are now up by about 70... What, 70, no, 74 points? And they are able to uh, get a kind of somewhat... I, I, I didn't see it, so I'm going to call it somewhat of a ninja or a rush capture. Insomniac was not prepared for it. And an R11 out to an early lead in this half. 14 minutes remaining. All right, uh, Insomniac gets the uh, two kills on bridge and is able to capture that bridge flag. Vinok waiting in that grass area, kills Corey as it comes around the corner, grabs his car and is now peeking over, sees a grenade fly, and that grenade is enough to kill him from nine. And it looks like the uh, Corey uh, has finished his KTV Gold Finals. Welcome to everyone. We are in Game 3 of Romario 11 versus Insomniac Gamers in the KTP Silver Quarterfinals. This match has been back and forth the entire time. And we are in Map 3 in the second half. The first half score is in the bottom. You can see one game apiece to both teams. The first half score is there showing a uh, lead for Insomniac Gamers, but it is a tenuous one as R11 does have a cap out lead on them this half. We see uh, Insomniac putting the pressure on. They're going to grab control of this plaza. LZL tried to body break it, but Pibian was a little too quick. So now R11 has to go into turtle mode, and we saw uh, both maps. R11 and turtle mode is a tough nut to crack. Rafina gets a kill on River Oyster. Nine, though, does trade and gets a kill on Rafina. Vanok unable to get uh, duality, but Mand is sitting there waiting for him to come around. Misses his shot. We see Insomniac getting winning the kill battle right now. Burn sitting in laundry, sitting in that water. He is the goalie. He is the one... That will sacrifice his score and his map control to make sure that they do not get capped out on. Rafina getting a double kill, cleaning up both 9 and Duality, taking the pressure off from Insomniac's pushers. And Rafina's just going to rush through. He does show, he did pass through Plaza, so it did show 1 out of 2. And Pibian uh, figured out where he was and took him out. Meanwhile, uh, Man knows Pibian is in that... Uh, ladder hole, but Pibian too fast gets a double kill from that ladder window. He's going to go up into that uh, 
that area and Zaps is waiting and rings the bell for good measure, but Duality kills Zaps. LZL, you're going the wrong way. Everyone's trying to capture your first. You need to watch out. LZL does kill Duality, but Cory gets a kill on Vinok. Rafina, though, there to clean it up. Cory died pretty close to the first flag. Rafina playing a nice defense. Burn, though, sitting in water. Like I said, Burn's going to sacrifice his stats here. Burn is playing goalie. He is going to sacrifice just to make sure no one can come through and ninja that flag. Twist coming through with five tier one subs. Thanks, bud. All right, R11 does capture the plaza. The pressure is taken off a little bit as Mand is now up in that tower. Gets a kill on nine on that main ramp. They definitely know he's in this tower. He only has three health. He is at a very uh, tenuous hold. They can definitely wall him if they want to. Burn sitting in Ivy, making sure no one comes through. Zaps watching that main ramp. LZL does not want to show on bridge. Now does, and he, and he gets Pibian for it. Now he's going to shoot into that meat locker. He sees one on short ramp. That grenade! Oh, that grenade does kill him. Not only him, but Rafina as well. Nine with a very clutch grenade throw. Uh, but it was just a little bit too late. And R11 does get the flag cap. But Insomniac should be able to cap it right back. But Burn and LZL are there to prevent that flag cap. So R11 has control of both double caps at this point. River Oyster does... Keep control of that middle flag. Duality, 10 health over here at Laundry. Kills Mand as he comes through. Kills Zaps as well. He's just waiting. His team gets bridge. They have one out of two on that plaza. Sean's going to grab that middle fla that, that first flag. So now, can Insomniac get the plaza? Sean is dead. They're running through. They are grabbing that plaza, but they are not getting it in time. Rafina is able to grab that first flag, as well as R11 was able to body block just, just long enough to have to make them restart that capture. And R11 prevents that cap out so we're at 112 to 70 so with these tick marks i believe that we have a uh still insomniac has retaken the lead if we go back in to adding in our first half score if not it is very close because i think they won by about 30 some points burn Meat Alley only get only gets one. Nine, though, does clear. Zaps gets River Oyster out of those double windows. Nine's route that he's taken almost every time he's died has been short ramp, throw grenade onto bridge, run into meat, go into uh go into street. This is a uh, a route that is generally considered not one you do every single time, but nine has, and it has paid dividends for Insomniac. Nine has had some very clutch grenades breaking that that middle that bridge capture. And it is just not a route that is normally run by an STG and nine is running it to a very high degree of uh, of accomplishment. So the Axis are getting one more point per tick, which is very uh, important when it comes to games that are this close. Those one points add up. Sean sees Mand up in there as Mand gets a kill, uh, but Vinok knows where Sean is and is able to take out both Vinok and Mand as they move up that main alley. Are they going to go capture that middle flag? Head Like a Hole is able to kill uh, two of them to prevent them from getting into that uh, that bridge. Oh, here we go. Corey jumping out a jump window. He's not going to capture that flag. He does not want to show them that he is there. But Mand is making sure that they don't capture that plaza. So it, Corey is uh, sitting there with his uh, with his pistol out so he doesn't show, making sure that he is ninja there. But while he's doing that, uh, Zaps is able to capture their first flag. Man kills nine coming out of Sundial. R11 needs to hold on to this uh, plaza. Rafina going to go capture that middle. And Corey's ninja might be uh, a little early. It might not be beneficial. He might be sitting there taking himself out of the fight for a ninja that will never come to fruition. 
Pibby and wins the sniper battle. Okay, now, now's the time. Insomniac has cleaned out both mid and, oh, Pibby and gets two no scopes there to clean out mid. Plus the kill on the sniper in the tower. They now have control of this plaza. Can they cap it though? Because Corey is still there. Oh my God. Oh my God. They didn't see him. Oh my God, Corey's thing. I might have said it might have been too little or too early, but they did not see him. They have no reason to believe he is there. Another spawn wave is about to come through, and he didn't see him either. Okay, Corey's ninja is still in play here. Can Insomniac push up? Now they got to capture Bridge again. Okay, so Corey at what? Corey decided he no longer needs to be ninja because we are losing. So he pops over to Bridge, grabs that first flag for a little bit of point tick. And he's going to spawn camp from that thing. Gets a second kill. Misses his third shot. He's about to get grenaded. And Zaps came back from behind to clean him up. Meanwhile, Nine has pushed up with his SDG. He and LZL grab, or it's Vinok, one of those, or it's head like a hole. He and uh, LZL is not even on this team. I'm on the wrong team. They grab that bridge and they move in. Nine now in that breach house gets a kill on Vinok as he comes through spawn. Can Insomniac finally get this plaza cap? R11 is holding on for dear life. I think Insomniac now uh, is about 43 points behind right now. And I think they won by like 40 points in the first half. So I think they might be winning. I can't see my little overlay like you guys can. So let's see. What was first half? 236 to 189. So that's 111, 47 points. And I do not think the Allies are, they are not 47 points ahead right now. They're actually 45 points ahead. So this is neck and neck with four minutes remaining. I believe there will be another cap out before the game ends, though, as the Allies grab that first flag, but the bridge cap did not come to fruition. Head like a hole, able to get the kill, able to grab his flag back, and now R11 is capping the flag. So now they have control of bridge. A little too little too late, but they are now going to try to apply pressure. Mand is in that spot behind Tiki with his sniper. Very hard to get an allied sniper out of that spot. Pibian going to try his best with his sniper rifle, and he does. He is able to outweight Mand and take the pressure off a little bit from there. Burn in plaza, sees LZL get, or Vinok get destroyed by Cory. Zaps does take Cory out. Burn gonna throw a grenade into Ivy. Nine, unaffected by the grenade, gonna Negative. sit there on that Ivy. <laughs> Burn, unable to kill Kellen. River Oyster, they are, and uh, Nine are going to capture that uh, no, they're not. Mand and Vinok say absolutely not. And they kill both Insomniac players trying to capture that plaza. And now all of a sudden we have a swing to uh, R11 maintaining their map control here. Negative. Absolutely. That, that, uh, that break deserved a negative. Corey over here on main ramp. He is taken out by Mand. Mand is up in this tower. He gets a second kill on duality. Mand really likes sniping from this tower. This is about the third or fourth time we've seen him up here. He missed the shot, and Nine is able to clean him up, though. Burn! 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 Misses his shots! Can't pull out the pistol in time. Head Like a Hole is able to kill him, but Head Like a Hole dies to a grenade, allowing Zaps to come in and grab that middle flag. Nine right outside there. It's two star-crossed lovers, and Nine is able to win that peak war to grab the flag back. This middle flag has changed hands more than a dollar bill, all right? This middle flag is going back and forth, back and forth. River Whister, 10 HP, going to try to capture this, uh, this flag. And the body block is there, but River Oyster gets a double kill. But it didn't matter because he lost his cat partner. So he's going to have to abandon Captain that plaza and try to push up into laundry, but he only had 10 health. So all it took was a stiff breeze from Zaps to kill him. We see a grenade come down main ramp, so we know someone will be peeking. Zaps going to run behind church. Nine only has 10 HP. He must have got 90 coming out of spawn. 
Oh, grenade pops right up at Pibian, and it explodes right in front of him, but Pibian doesn't die, and he's able to kill Rafina by that. If that was me, that nade could have bounced about 10 feet higher and still killed me, but Pibian's got plot armor, prevents him from dying, 13 HP, able to pick off Rafina, and he's going to run up and try to capture this uh, bridge, and he and Cory will successfully capture that bridge, and Rafina was so close from maintaining possession of that, that literally if that grenade was one foot closer... That would have been a, uh, the uh, Insomniac would not have gotten that bridge capture. It's literally a game of inches sometimes. Okay, at this point, we are at 176 for allies, 113 for Axis. So the ticks have put our 11 uh, greater then the Axis won first half, and we are at 37 seconds left. I think R11 is securing their lead with these sticks. Man gets a beautiful headshot on Headlock Hole. Burn gets a double kill on Bridge. They get that double kill, that, that Bridge capture back. Burn cannot get him out of mid, uh, that uh, thing. Rafina grabs the second. This is coming down. They are now 70 points ahead. They are now winning after the thing. Insomniac needs a push. There's only 13 seconds, though. Only 13 seconds. They're out of time. Insomniac's out of time. R11 is uh, through ticks and through that big push. They are going to secure not only this half, but the whole map three. And they had an incredible comeback into that map two, forcing that map three, causing Insomniac to be on the back foot on that map three. That was an insane best of three match. That was incredible. Absolutely a joy to watch. And R11 is going to eliminate not only Insomniac Gamers, but eliminate the head admin of KTP himself, Mr. Nine. He is out. He is no longer in the running to be KTP Silver Champion. As we look at our bracket, the, the games that are coming in, we have Spicy being able to secure that win over Washed Up. They will face Saab next week. Then we have uh, R11 pulling the upset on uh, on uh, our Insomniac Gamers. They will move on. Then we have 3H beating Nogo uh, in a 2-0. They, uh, they, they beat Nogo pretty easily, 2-0. I just checked that. They will move on. So next week, we will have semifinal actions for KTP Silver. We will have 3H versus R11. We will have Saab versus Spicy. Best of three action. If it's anything like this week, it's going to be absolutely nuts. If you were watching the KTP Gold Finals, you saw a very good match with NSA beating Icy Hot 2-0. So NSA is your KTP Gold champion. That KTP Gold bracket went chalk the whole way every time the upper seed won. NSA dominated throughout the whole uh, the whole regular season. They dominate the playoffs. They win. Meanwhile, KTP Silver playoffs coming in. We are looking at some very, very good matchups between 3H and R11 and between Saab and Spicy next week. Make sure you are here. There are only two matches next week. KTP Gold is finished. NCA or, or, or NSA are your champions. KTP Silver just getting started. We have our quarterfinals. We have our semifinals set. 3H. Versus R11. R11 with a beautiful comeback. R11 forcing that game three. R11 losing the first half of game three, but making sure they don't get capped out on there at the end. And then pushing their way through and making and, and coming up to having a great finish to their maps and eliminating Insomniac Gamers. If you were here for all three matches, thank you for being here with me. It means a lot to me to be able to watch really good DoD with my friends. This is a, a, this is a thing that we have enjoyed for 15, 20 years, all the way from beta to now. This is something that we keep alive through our enjoyment, and I, it's, very, it's very fun to be able to have something that you enjoy with other people. So I thank you for joining me as I watch this.
I will be casting a match next week. We do not know which one, but uh, I will probably be patch casting R11 again versus 3H, and I assume Corey will be casting Saab versus, uh, versus, versus Spicy. Both of these stack up to be a very good matchups that could easily go those three games as we watch these semifinals. Thank you so much for joining. I hope you have a really good night, and I will see you next time. That gun goes straight up.